1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 10 to 17. We will read this in a responsive way. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Now this I say that every one of you say it, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. I thank God that I baptize none of you but Crispus and Gaius. And I baptize also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other altogether. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Father, once again, we are asking for forgiveness, for cleansing, Lord, that we may be worthy to receive your word tonight. I pray, Lord, that you will uh, speak in our hearts that we may know what to do, that we may be enabled, O oh God, to do your will, and that this church, Lord, will be united in such a way that the unity that you will give us will redound to the salvation of lost people in this place and in other places as well. I pray, Lord, tonight that you will be glorified in our midst, that you will help me to be a blessing to your people, and that your people will be attentive to listen to your word, to grasp, O oh God, the truths that we are going to encounter, and to be determined that we are going to make it manifested, Lord, in our lives, so that, Lord, we can give a good account in your name, and that, Lord, you will be glorified, Lord, in the eyes of many people. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will be the one to lead us tonight as we fellowship with your word. May you be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Thank you very much. So we're going to study tonight about members united and cooperating in the church. So if IBCSR is going to experience the blessings of the Lord and to accomplish all that God wants us to accomplish, then we have to be united. Amen. There must be cooperation from all the members of the church. Our unity must be complete that everyone will be doing the things that God has assigned to each and every one of us. When I use the word unity, I'm not talking about uniformity. Because uniformity simply means that everyone looks alike and everyone thinks alike. The truth is that many churches uh, have a wrong concept of unity and that their concept is actually uniformity. That is why in some churches, you know, preachers or uh, workers, full-time workers are commanded to wear a certain color of a shirt, white. They must part their hair in the same way. They must uh, all wear a necktie. And even when they're playing basketball, they should uh, wear long pants. Uh, not necktie because that will be dangerous. But they are mis mistaken in the concept of unity. They thought that Uniformity constitutes unity. Uniformity only means that you look the same, but there is nothing inside or there is nothing in the heart or in the mind that may be the same. So uniformity focuses on the outside, but unity permeates the uh, whole person. 
So that is uh, why unity is very important. So when I use the word unity, I am actually referring to what we call solidarity of heart. Similarity of purpose and a compatibility when it comes to the truth. It means that in unity, our heart is solid in the things that we are doing, that our purpose is similar, and that is to glorify God, to lift up the name of God, to reach the lost, and that is to give a good account for the glory of God, and that there is compatibility in the truth. That means we hold at the same truth that is in the Word of God. If the Bible is dogmatic about something, we are dogmatic about it, but if the Bible will allow uh, what we call uh, uh, discretion, then we allow discretion. We allow liberty as long as the Bible is allowing liberty in how we understand the Word of God. But there are things that are non-negotiable and we are the same in those things or the truth of the Word of God. And these things can only be brought about by the Holy Spirit because humans or mere human or the flesh cannot accomplish all these things because we will definitely have a difference in thinking but if we will allow the Holy Spirit to teach us with the Word of God then we are going to have a similarity or compatibility in how we regard the truth of the Word of God. Amen. So as much as we want unity, let us remember that our enemy Satan wants this unity. And his strategy is always the same in achieving this unity. And that is to divide and conquer. That is the reason why there must be no division or faction in the church. You see, in our experience, even though we are not so many, but when we allow these things to happen, then it will start to basically tear the church apart when we have this group of the Visayan and this group of the Kapampangan and this group of the Ilocano and this group of the uh, Tagalog and this group of the uh, Filipinos and this group of the Cambodians then we are dividing the church and we are making our church weak that is why we are going to fall, to fall prey to the devil because when we are weak then there is no way that we can defeat the enemy why because the lord jesus christ will not be able to help a church that is not united in the lord amen let us remember that no matter uh, how strong we can be if we are going to be divided then we are going to fall that is why we must strive for unity you see, the devil is no match for a united church, even though the church is small. But even though the church is big, they may have big buildings, many buildings, uh, many uh, people in the church, or even a large offering. But if they are not united, then the devil can pick them apart, destroy them member by member. He will get one member at a time until the time comes that the church will be destroyed by our enemy. Remember that Satan's motive is division, his method is deception, and his mission is destruction. That is what he wants to accomplish in our church. So if he is going to deceive us, then he can divide us, and if he can divide us, then he can ultimately destroy us. That is the reason why we need to stick together. So in the passage that we have read, we saw that the Apostle Paul delivers a message on unity. He actually attacked the problem and emphasizes unity in the church at Corinth. Why? Because unity is the foundation from which all other problems can be addressed in a local church unity is an environment that can allow the church to be effective to effectively minister to people and to move forward to the task that god wants us to accomplish as a church so as the apostle paul deal with the problem 
we can see that there are several things that he did. Number one, he looked at the facts. In any problem, there must always be a, an, a, 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 an importance must be given to the fact of every problem. Because if we will not know the fact, then we cannot solve any problem. If we will not know the truth regarding a problem, then it is impossible to solve that problem. But here, in the text that we have read, the Apostle Paul says that it was declared. It means it was made evident or it was made clear that there was a division in the church at Corinth. And the evidence is very clear that even if you will just stay for a while at the church at Corinth, without saying anything, but just by observing, you will notice that they are divided. You will notice that they do not have a similar purpose. You will notice that they are not compatible when it comes to the truth. You will notice that their heart is not one. There is no solidarity or unity in the purpose of their heart. If you will sit down at the church of Corinth during the Lord's Supper, you will see that the, the uh, uh, rich people are in one place and the poor people are in another place. You will see that there are those who are feasting uh, with food and there are those who are not eating anything. If you will sit down at the church of Corinth, you will notice that maybe the, uh, the, the rich members are sitting in front and the poor members may be sitting at the back. You will see that there are people who are not shaking or kissing each other because that is how they greet each other during that time. Kissing each other during the, uh, if they have what we call the welcome, a part of their worship. You will see that they do not see eye to eye. Why? Because there is schism, there is division in the body, and it is something that was declared to Apostle Paul, and the reason why it must be declared to Apostle Paul is because Apostle Paul was not at Corinth. But if you are there, you will see that the problem is very evident. I believe that they do not even have, uh, that they do not even uh, try to hide their disunity. They do not even try to, you know, play a hypocrite by at least showing in public that they are okay with each other. But this thing is something that is very evident. So Paul looked at the uh, fact of the problem because he was not interested in humor. He was not interested in speculation. He is only interested in <coughs> the truth. So that is the reason why truth is very important. If you are going to report something in the church, be sure that what you are saying is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Do not try to add something to the story. Do not remove something to the story, but it doesn't matter who may be affected, you just say the truth. Because one thing or one way that we can solve any problem in the church is to know the truth. But we must know also the right protocol. We have a, a protocol in the Bible that you cannot just stand up and, and say what you want to say. But there is a process and God is a God of order and not of confusion. When something results in confusion, then it is not the way of God. So, Paul looked at the truth, he gathered enough information, and all he received is not gossip, but they were irrefutable facts. And the fact is that there is disunity in the church of Corinth. You see, the fact that there were divisions in the church at Corinth revealed several things. What does it reveal? Number one, it revealed that there is a faction in the church. You see, the Greek word for division uh, describes a tear. It may be a tear in a garment or uh, yung, yung lamat tear in a base or a tear in, in a 
a chain, something that will weaken the whole. You see, if there is a tear in a garment, it, it will become weak. Uh, I noticed that if you're going to buy a textile, what the uh, seller is going to do is put a small tear and then just rip it apart. But without that tear, it is almost impossible for the seller to rip that fabric apart. And that is what division is doing in a church. It is making the church weak so that when the devil attacks, he can easily tear the church apart. That is why in Matthew 12, 25, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ says. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. There is a saying, if we are in unity, we stand, but if we are not together, then we are going to fall. Paano na kasi yan? Together we stand. Divided we fall. And that is what is happening in the church at Corinth. You see, if you will look at the church at Corinth, you will see that it's a wealthy church. That is the reason why they can help the uh, churches in uh, uh, Jerusalem during the period of drought. You can see that they have many in attendance. That's why they have at least four factions in the church. You will see that uh, on the outside, if you will look at the church at Corinth, they are okay. But because of disunity, because of division, the truth of the matter is that they are very weak. Have you seen a, a post? Before in the Philippines, our posts are not uh, cement. They are made of wood. And sometimes they may be a, a huge post, but sometimes if, if they are not treated well, the termites can get in and eat away the, uh, the middle of that post so it will become hollow. So if you will look at that post on the outside, it may be big, it may be sturdy, it may be strong, but we do not know that it is already hollow in the inside. And an earthquake or a weak typhoon may come and it will totally wreck that post. And that is what is happening at the church in Corinth. And not only the church in Corinth, in many churches, all over the world it's happening. I know of a church in, a, uh, in Little Rock, I believe that's Arkansas, Arkansas or Kansas, and it is one of the uh, uh, fastest growing church among the independent Baptists. It actually reached an attendance of almost 7,000. And then after uh, my deputation, I went back to Cambodia, and then after more than three years, I went back to the United States, uh, I went to Beams, and then all of a sudden, I heard the people talking about this church that it is about to close, and their member went down to only about 150, from almost 7,000 to 150. Why? Because there were uh, divisions in the church. And the pastor, even though that pastor is a very known pastor, if I will tell you his name, maybe you have heard about him, Eric Capese. Uh, he's uh, uh, one of, uh, of the great uh, preacher there in the States, in, uh, in the at least Midwest, Eric Capese. And even though he was a great preacher, he was not able to mend the church. Why? Because this unity already ate at the core of the church. And that destroyed the church. Well, perhaps you know Lee Robertson, the pastor of Highland Park Baptist Church, one of the largest Baptist church in the United States of America. At one time, it was larger than the first Baptist church in Hammond, Indiana. It is uh, well known in uh, the uh, state of Tennessee. Almost uh, uh, thousands of miss missionaries came from the church. And it was a very well-known church when Pastor Lee Robertson was the pastor of that church. At the age of more than 90, Pastor Lee, Lee Robertson uh, died and the church was given to a man that caused division in the church. 
and now the church no longer exists they are just in a small town renting a small building with less than 100 people before they run uh, maybe 20 30,000 people something like that so if there is unity it will make the church weak that is why uh, we should not be surprised and I hope it will not happen that there are big churches who all of a sudden will fall because if there is no unity the church is not going to be a strong church amen not only that but if there is division then there is also carnality you mark it if there is division in a church most often than not the cause of this is carnality the reason why there is misunderstanding the reason why there is infighting the reason why we could not go along with each other is because of carnality look at james chapter 4 and verse number one the bible says from whence come wars and fightings among you come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members so they, they, they there are fightings among the people they do not understand each other why because there is carnality and when carnality is present in a church then it is impossible to have unity amen there will always be contention even a small matter will become big even though something is a non-issue it's going to be a big issue and if there is no issue at all they will create an issue because that is what carnality is thriving in carnality will never be happy if there is no problem carnality will never be at home in a peaceful environment carnality is not going to thrive if, pe if people are understanding each other carnality will always enjoy if there is disarray if there is chaos if uh, the, the place is messy if the things are not in order then carnality is going to thrive and that is what is happening at the church in Corinth they are contending against each other they do not like each other they are at, uh, there is a, a what you call differences in what they stand on and the actions that they are doing are all the actions of the flesh mentioned in uh, Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 now the works of the flesh are manifest which are this adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies envyings murders drunkenness revelings and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So there is a chaotic church. Why? Because they are being led by the flesh and not led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? They are trying to insist on what they desire instead of thinking or esteeming other people above than they are so that is the problem here at the church in Corinth there is that division then the apostle Paul denounced this faction because you see a person who loves God will never enjoy division you will never be at peace when there is division in the church and then the division here is actually about personalities we can see that in uh, uh, verse number 2, I believe, uh, 11. No, no, can you, can you go? Yes, 12. Now this I say that every one of you say it, I am a Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. So there is a division regarding personalities. And you know, in, in our country, in the Philippines, there is a division regarding personalities, but not in a local church setting. That is one thing that, uh, that we may like in the church in the Philippines. 
Because one thing that you may not like is this. Only one person is lording it over in a local church. That's why you will not see this. You will not see, you will not see uh, uh, in the church saying, I am of uh, Benny Abante. Uh, you cannot say any other name after that. You're not allowed to. You cannot say, I am of uh, uh, Pastor Ed Lorena. Uh, and the other uh, faction will say, I am of... No, 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 no. You cannot do that. Why? Because there is only one person that is leading the church. And these people will not allow anybody to be at peace with them. They are in a class of their own. Nobody can reach them. That is why during when, when I got saved, when I was a new Christian, a certain uh, mention of the word pastor is enough. And then after a while, others demanded to be called bishop. And then after a while, others wanted to be called patriarch. And I do not know what, be, what will be next. You see, that is a problem of pride, not division. Because it is impossible to divide that church. That church is being controlled by one person and they call the form of government as theocracy. God's rule through one man. And it also shows their ignorance of the word of God. Because in the Bible, there are multiple leaders in the church. The church is being handled by elders. There may be one overseer, but there are many elders. There may be one pastor, but there are many leaders in the church. And because of their greed, they fell into an erroneous interpretation of the word of God. But here at Corinth, it's different. I do not know who the pastor at Corinth is. Anybody? Maybe we will dig deeper, we will find out who the pastor is. But, if you will notice, they mention Paul, who obviously was not there because he was in a missionary journey. They mentioned Cephas, who obviously was not there or may have not even reached uh, Corinth. They mentioned Apollos, who may have been invited and preach in their church and they mentioned the Lord Jesus Christ who even is always present he was not physically present there at Corinth I do not know but I'm just looking at uh, this possibility they did not even mention the name of their pastor or the name of their elders in their division in the church but they are what we call into the problem regarding uh, favoritism of a particular personality. So we see that some says that they were of the Apostle Paul. Well, it is uh, very obvious to understand that some of them, or maybe most of them, are uh, of the camp of the Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul actually is the founder of this church. And most probably, the first members or the charter members of the church are the ones saying that we are of the Apostle Paul. What kind of a preacher is Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul is a, a, what you call a, 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 a doctrinal preacher. He is very deep when the Apostle Paul is preaching. Even though he is using uh, words easy to understand, but he is a doctrinal preacher because he has a vast knowledge of the Old Testament. Remember, before he got saved, he was a Pharisee. And he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. And the, maybe the intellectual people, or those people that are deeply rooted in the Old Testament, may like the Apostle Paul. And then some associated themselves with Apollos. And we know that Apollos is a, an orator. He is a very... Uh, he is finesse when it comes to 
preaching. We hope that pastors will be finished when they are preaching. But the, uh, the uh, Apollos is a finesse preacher. We can say that he is a uh, uh, an orator, a uh, maybe like like uh, Spurgeon, a prince when it comes to preaching. Very polished because that is the uh, uh, personality of Apollos, and he was a very knowledgeable person. And then there were those who are with the apostle Peter. That even though he may not have been there, but he was a well-known apostle because of his personality, even before he was converted. So maybe they, they associated themselves with Peter. And I believe that if, if we live during the time of Peter and heard Peter preach, he's a, a kind of a, a hell, fire, and brimstone preacher. He is a kind of a, a shouting, a running, jumping, a eating fire preacher. That, that's the personality of Peter. He's a, I remember that when the Lord Jesus Christ is saying something very important, Peter will jump in and will say, That will not happen to you, Lord. Under my dead body. Uh, uh, over my dead body. That is what Peter will say. So that is the personality of Peter. And maybe those members that are quite enthusiastic may like Peter. But there are those who are ultra spiritual in their mind. They said, we are the Lord Jesus Christ. Ano, may panama kayo dyan? But that is not actually siding with Jesus. It is telling them that we do not need humans to lead us. Because we will only listen to the head of the church and that is Jesus Christ and we do not need pastors we do not need elders we do not need leaders because we already have the Lord Jesus Christ so this is a holier than thou attitude they do not want to be governed by other people but they want to govern themselves but ladies and gentlemen take note of this if you are going to be into this personality game then you're not going to grow. Because what you will see is the messenger, you will not hear the message. You will not hear the message. You will say amen to everything that the person will say. But you're not going to meditate and understand what is being said. You see, you see the cult? No matter what their leader say, they will believe without understanding, without investigating, and without studying the Word of God. Soriano have teach, taught many things that are contradictory, and yet they will believe him. Why? Because they are into personality. They are not into the truth. So when these things happen, it definitely saddens the Apostle Paul. And then, in verses 13 to 16, this is what he said. Is Christ divided? So he asked a question. Is the Lord Jesus Christ divided? Was Paul cruci crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. Lest any should say that I had baptized in my in mine own name, and I baptized also the house of the Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. So we, if, but if, before we we uh, go to uh, continue the message, if you're going to look at this, there are some people who are making uh, much about this that uh, bap baptism is not important anymore. Listen, baptism, baptism has nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is by grace through faith. You repent, you receive Jesus, plus nothing, minus nothing, that is salvation. It is based on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are those who will say that even 
after you got saved, you do not need to be baptized. Because that is not important anymore. Baptism is a command of Jesus. Baptism is the first step of obedience of a person who believed the Lord Jesus Christ. Baptism is an outward manifestation of what inwardly happened to a person that when you are underwater, it means that you, and uh, when you're standing up, it means that you uh, died with Christ. If you are put underwater, that you were buried with Christ. And when you are raised up, that you were resurrected with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are not walking, you are not walking in newness of life. It is an outward picture of what happened inside of us. It has nothing to do with salvation, but it has all to do with our obedience to God. This is that important. Because we are now in the dispensation of the Apostle Paul. And Paul says that Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Yes, he, was, he may not be sent specifically to baptize, but question, why did he baptize Crispus and Gaius? There is a reason. Amen? And the reason is Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Why did he baptize the house of Stephanus? There is a reason. And the reason is because these people wanted to obey God. So why are we going to say that in our dispensation, baptism is no longer important? Or baptism is no longer required? For them, you will just go to the church and you will be accepted as a member without even following the Lord in the water of baptism. But going back to the message, you can see that the Apostle Paul is not interested in becoming important in the church at Corinth. Amen? Because it was very clear. He, wa he was the one who wrote Colossians 1.18 saying that Jesus is the head of the church. And there is only one head in the church. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? There is only one Lord in the church. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one great shepherd in the church. And that is Jesus. All other shepherds are under shepherds. And they are just instruments of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, men may be important, but they have their own place. And you do not lift them up above their own place in the church. Amen. I may be the pastor of this church, but I am not the most important person in this church. We are preachers in this church, but they are not the most important people in this church. We are merely human instruments of God. When Paul says, was I crucified? Was Paul crucified? He's saying that I may be an instrument for you getting saved. But I was not the one who saved you. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. And if Jesus is the one who saved you, then all of us must worship, must focus, and must lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He is the most important person in any local church all over the world. Why? Because he is the source of our salvation. Amen? Look at 1 Corinthians 4.6. Paul says, and these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. So what is Apollos and Paul is showing to them, or has shown them, an example of humility. Amen. Not to think of men above that which is written that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. You see, there is no competition in the church. We do not compete with each other. We complement each other. We help each other. I'm here to help you. You are there to help me. We are here to help each other. I, I, I must not do anything 
to show you that I'm better than other people here in the church. And you should not do the same. But you see, sometimes that's a problem. People wanted their own followings. They have their own favorites in the church. And because of that, they are dividing the body. And sometimes, we may not be conscious of it, but we are falling into the trap of the devil. Well, you see, if people are admiring you, it made your ears clap. And it made you feel good. And when that happens, the tendency is to just allow these people to follow you. And then you will st uh, begin to enjoy it. You have no ill intention. You have no evil thoughts regarding these things. But listen, when a disagreement happened between you and one of the leaders, then the devil will start to tell you and whisper to your ears, you have more followings than them. Why bow down to them? Why submit to them? They should be wary of you. You should be the one to become the leader of the church. And that will start the division in the church. Amen? You see, listen, people wanted leaders to follow so that when they do not like other leaders, they can persuade the leader that they are following to divide the church and maybe start their own church. And that happened so many times in the Philippines. It almost happened here. Those people who went back to the Philippines wants to have one or two of our deacons so that they can control the church. But the Lord did not allow it. Because actually they got two deacons. Actually the two deacons started uh, this whole thing. But the thing is that they have no foothold on the church. So they need one or two more who have been here for a long time. But they were not able to persuade them. So what they did is an act of cowardice to destroy the church long distance. Yeah. Because they cannot face the heat. They cannot face the truth. So they have to run. And they have to use pawns. Who I do not know why they are not using their own mind. Be allowing themselves to be the shield of the cowards. So that they can get what they want from the church where they were a part of and have been blessed so much but they don't care because that is just the heart the mind of greedy people and that is sad and it's happening in so many churches now who are facing danger here in Cambodia those that were left behind. Kaya mahirap yung left behind. Kahit sa rapture, pag left behind ka talagang. <laughs> Ikaw ang makakaranas ng pitong taong kapighatian eh. They're going to, to face justice. Why? Because they allow themselves to be used, abused, and manipulated by people who are playing politics in the church. Amen? Amen? That is the reason why there is absolutely no place for a person on top of our heart than just the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So, Pastor, it's wrong to uh, think of other people as special. No, it's not wrong. You, there is... Actually, nothing wrong with having special place in your heart for the one or for the ones responsible for your salvation because they were used by God. We need to understand that. 
And it is uh, ingratitude not to uh, recognize how God used them in order for you to, to receive forgiveness and salvation. There is nothing wrong with that. But they should not occupy the place of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because all of us are just human instrumentality used by God in order for God to show blessing, to give salvation, and so that people will feel His love towards other people, and that is true. Us. You remember the song, Let Your Love Flow Through Me. Let Your Love Flow Through Me. Make me a blessing, Lord, wherever I may be. Why? Because we are the mouthpiece of God. We are the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ that can show people the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we must show gratitude. Amen? Yung pa rin naman hindi. Pagkatapos makinabang, bigla ka na lang, eh, mahirap sa tao eh. Kahit gano'n mo ka, kahit gano'n ka haba yung kabutihan na gawa mo, pag may mali kang nagawa, tapos lahat yung mabuti. Nakapokus na lang doon sa masama. Hindi na ibabalikan yung mabuti. Ako mga kapatid, nagkaroon ako ng falling away with people. Nagkaroon ako niyan. Nag, nagkaroon ako ng falling away with Pastor Ed Lorena. Pero, I, I, I will never forget ko ano yung yung naitulong niya sa akin. I will never forget kung ano yung naitulong niya sa akin. At patuloy ko siyang pasasalamatan doon. Why? Napakapangit naman na i-focus ko lang kung ano yung hindi ko gusto. Napakasama ako naman, ang tignan ko na lang yung, yung, yung hindi mabuti. Eh minsan nga, baka mali pa ako ng tingin eh. Hindi natin pwedeng saraduhan ng pinto sa tao. Always, there must always be the door must always be ajar so that these people can still be accepted in our lives why? because as long as people are living especially the children of God there is always hope laging merong pag-asa mga kapatid hindi porkit nagkasira kayo sira na kayo hindi sino ba yung dating kagalit mo? pero ngayon magkasundo kayo Kung pagka nagkasira, hindi na magkakabate, walang mag-asawang magsasama. Kailan lang nagkasira kayo, hindi ba? Pero magkasama pa rin kayo. Tatlumpong taon na tayo nagkakasira, Maribel. Pero magkasama pa rin kami. Bak- bakit namin nagagawa sa isa't isa? Pero may mga taong hindi magawa yun sa iba. Hindi ko maintindihan. Kaya nga ako lagi kong sinasabi, Kung may pagkakataon lang, eh, lagi mo nag-usap mag-asawa. Makipag-usap lang sa amin ng mga taong ito, sabihin lang ang totoo. Bakit ko namang gustong perwisyuin ng sino man tao? Ganun lang kasimple yun. Pero, ayaw mo, anong gagawin ko? Oh. Tinali mo yung kamay ko. Wala akong magagawa. Kasi pag wala akong ginawa, Abay, mamamayag pag kayo, magyayabang kayo, magsasabi kayo, kita mo, walang magawa sa atin yung mga yan. Hindi ganun. Ito, hindi ko maintain yan eh. Sabihin nila, huwag kayong mag-alala. Hindi kayo guguluin ng mga yan. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Hindi nila gagawin to. Kasi nakakaintindi ng Bible yung mga yan. Sila pala, hindi nakakaintindi. Para pag may ginawa sa'yo, Pero hindi ka pwedeng kumante kasi bawal. Suntukin mo. Kasi ang nakasulat sa Bible, pag, sinun- pag sinampal ka sa kaliwa, iharap yung kanan. Suntukin mo, iharap pa yung kabila sa'yo. Kita niyo yung katusuhan? Ano ko niyo? Tuso! Hindi kayo iyahabra niyan. Bawal sa Bible. Pero sirain natin. Bawal sa Bible yun eh. Oh. Hindi ko maintindihan, hindi ko makuha. Anong paluwanag? Simple, hindi na intindihan ng Bible. 
Ba't din naintindihan ng Bible? Simple. Baka walang Holy Spirit. Pag walang Holy Spirit, simple. Baka hindi ligtas. Wala tayo magagawa. But we just have to do what we have to do by the grace of God. So sabi ni Paul, do not focus on personality. Do not focus on, on your own desire. Do not focus on the things that will make you comfortable and happy. But our focus must be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Look at verse number 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus our Lord. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who called us. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who saved us. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who is sanctifying us. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who will glorify us. So if it is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we must focus on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. There is this example. Think about this. Example, there are 100 pianos. And all of these pianos are tuned to the same tuning device. Ano yung tawag niya? Yung pang-tuning, ano nang... Piano. Tuner. If the 100 pianos are tuned to the same tuner, what will happen? They are automatically tuned to each other. So they do not have to compare themselves to each other. There must only be one standard. And if they are all tuned to that standard, then all of them will become automatically tuned with each other. And if we will make Jesus Christ as our standard, and we all look unto Jesus and in tune with the Lord Jesus Christ, then we will be in tune with each other. Amen? No problem at all. Why? Because we have, we are now in the same frequency that we can understand each other. If we are drawn naturally to the Lord Jesus Christ, then we will be drawn naturally to each other. Remember, all of us have one thing in common, and that is our common salvation, according to Jude. Amen? That is our common faith. And we have the common book, so that if we will understand these things according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, then we are going to be united we are going to be strong and we can glorify God in our lives. Amen. So focus on Jesus and then focus on our cause. What is our cause? Paul says to preach the gospel. That is the point. Why are we a church? It's so that we can go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is or was the mandate given to us by God. And if we are going to focus on our cause, then we will be the source of salvation to many a lost people. And what will destroy that cause? Division. If there is division, we cannot do that. We cannot even support a missionary because some will not agree. We do not know how to go about this because some will not agree. Why? Because we are, di we are divided. You see, Paul says, is Christ divided? You know, the Greek word for the word used by the Apostle Paul is to apportion. Like, if, for example, you're going to kill a, uh, a, uh, a pig and then after that, you're going to cut it into portions. That is a uh, the, the picture of the Greek word. So when the Apostle Paul asks, is Christ divided? It means, is Christ mutilated? Yung pinagputul-putul ba natin ng Panginoon? 
פינוטו. Nakapotol-potol Nakandahulog Kung ano-ano nangyari And if that is What we Are going to do Listen Then we are showing the word A Very ugly picture Of the Savior And nobody will want That kind Of a Savior Amen So, if we will become divided continually, then we are pushing people to hell. But if we are going to be united, then we are going to pull them out of the fire and bring them to heaven. So, we have to make a choice. Are we going to be divided? Or are we going to be united? If we are not going to be united, then we are just wasting our time. We're wasting our money. We're wasting our effort. But if we are going to be united, then listen, we may just be a handful. But as the group, you know, the name of the group in the Philippines, uh, former... Uh, Prisoners, we are a handful of God's miracle. We can accomplish something. We can glorify God. People will be saved. And we are going to be able to honor God's name in our life. We can be successful spiritually. All it takes is for us to be United, amen? Okay, shall we stand up? Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the message.